You have no idea what you're in for. Don't speak. Don't even breathe. Develop under Tom Clancy franchise. It means uh, it means that you need to validate and to justify everything. It takes place in a very near future, so uh, you need to use a political environment that is believable, that is linked to the actual situation. You need to use gadgets that are already existing, that are already used by special forces, or a gadget that is currently in research that is believable to exist in the very near future. We really want the player to feel that, oh my god, uh, this could happen for real, like tomorrow. The NSA created this solo operative that can react quickly. It can be, of course, a little more stealth than uh, classical um, counter-terrorist squads. When Sam Fisher is on the field, he receives order from a US government and he doesn't care about international treaties or uh, political, any political agreement. He just, he do what he needs to do. It could be good thing, it could be very bad things. And he has to do it secretly without leaving a trace. He can play safe by shooting most of the light and make a safe path through the level. He can also decide to shoot a little more on the enemy. Or he can also decide to use the environment to create distractions and sneak behind the guards. If he fails and is detected, uh, US government will instantly deny his involvement in this mission. It's all about mixing those features together that would provide either interesting gameplays or uh, interesting graphic uh, results. The bright flame That's the of secure American line, honey. freedom it's from burning me. throughout oh. the world. Hello, Rambert. As far as the research that went into coming up with Sam uh, concept and looked, we uh, looking at the, the script. The script was describing Sam as a seasoned veteran. Um, uh, really like a career soldier basically and um, and all the background that was described in the script was the fact that he was a next CIA uh, operative also a next Navy SEAL team member so one of our first idea was to, uh, to have Sam uh, sporting white hair it looked okay but the feedback we got from a lot of people uh, was the fact that Sam looked too old at that point not not as much as a seasoned but more as a retired soldier which was exactly way off what we wanted in the first place. So we've decided to uh, tone down the white hair and just kept it on the sides and uh, do the more black hair type of look, which also was associated with the stealth part of the character. So we've, uh, we've decided to go for that for the final uh, concept. Almost the same thing Sam uses, but a more advanced prototype. I get the... Uh, I get what the ordinary people get. Sam's suit was based on a prototype that's being tested right now by the Navy SEALs, which is a wetsuit that you can wear in and out of water, and is a suit that adapts itself to uh, temperature changes. We thought it would just fit the character, basically, since our game is based on a near-future type of setting. If you look at Sam's vest and all his pouches and equipment, it's all stuff that's lightweight, compact. Um, since Sam is a solo operative, uh, we've decided to keep those elements in there, uh, give him as much cargo space as possible, but at the same time without all that cargo being too cumbersome for the player. So this is something we, uh, we've kept throughout the design. We decided to go with uh, Antron uh, animation because we wanted to have uh, a unique style, uh, especially for Sam. Sometimes we would uh, we would use uh, video footage of ourselves acting uh, a motion movement and use it as a reference for key poses and timing.
for a complex move like the split jump, we go directly to 3D, applying the basic animation notions until it fits the style. The inspiration came from a lot of sources. Uh, for moves like rappelling, uh, we use realistic SWAT tactics. We also wanted to have action moves in, in the game, so for uh, rolling, split jump, force cooperation, human shield, we turn to Marvin, movies. I don't shoot! Please! I need somebody to cover my patrol while I make a pit stop. <laughs> Any walking, jogging, sneaking, or weight cycles need to be tweaked a lot because they're really critical to game. These are the animation that you see the most. Everything on the character is animated. Uh, we have 10 bones just for the face. Um, we can make them blink, smile, get angry. Uh, it's that portion of the animation that can make the whole difference. Sam's goggle became an important part of his appearance because we wanted to come up with a design that would make that character recognizable to the player as much as Batman is recognizable to uh, a lot of people, just uh, the cape silhouette with the pointy ears. We wanted to have something that would have the same effect, so the silhouette with the three dots, which are actually lights emanating from the uh, night vision. Um, I think just that fact alone makes Sam recognizable to a lot of people, and uh, since our game is based on uh, lightning stealth, uh, you see that repeatedly in the game. You just see Sam coming out of the shadows with the three dots. So um, this is why the uh, the goggles are such an important part of his uh, of his uh, suit. Level designer's job is really to build uh, the content of the game. They build the actual environments. The game designer is uh, responsible for the, the core design and the core mechanics and the core systems of the game, and sort of making sure that from level to level, the progression of difficulty, the, the gameplay challenges uh, progress in a, in a way that the player can keep up with the challenge. You need to make sure that uh, things are consistent, that the player is learning from level to level uh, how to pass the necessary challenges and those challenges aren't just changing uh, randomly from level to level. A door always needs to open the same way for the player. Um, guns need to work in a consistent fashion. All the systems need to be consistent because you can't keep teaching the player the same systems again and again. You have to make sure he learns them once and then is able to build on that knowledge rather than having to learn the same things multiple times. You can start with a very simple challenge in, in an early level, like uh, level one, you'll learn how to climb a pipe. Uh, come level three, you'll, you'll want the player to have to climb that pipe again, but in a slightly different, slightly more challenging scenario where there might be an enemy looking out the window. Uh, and then in level five or level seven, you're going to have uh, the player climbing a pipe with an enemy looking out the window with a moving dynamic light uh, searching the, the area of the pipe. Once the player has learned a set of skills uh, in one part of one map or over a, the course of a few maps, you want to uh, then encourage the player to face all of these challenges simultaneously or in close proximity to each other. 